Hello and welcome to Radio Waves. I'm your host, Chris Poliquin, and this is a production of Red Apples Media. We're broadcasting out of WLBE My 790 AM out of Leesburg, Florida. And if you're watching us on television, you're doing so on Lake Sumter TV, Bright House Channel 498, Comcast Channel 13, and CenturyLink Channel 83. So today I've invited Brian Young, the events and promotion director for Get Off the Bus Concerts which is an organization that is, I say little known, but has really good names and for really good causes. So let's get started. Brian, thanks for coming on today? the show. Yep, glad, glad to be back. Yeah, yeah, we've had you on before yeah. for something else and you're always a good guest, so. Yeah, and, and you're talking about one of my favorite subjects now, concerts and promotions, and so that's what we do. Right on. At Get Off the Bus, and of course, the reason we do it is to assist charities. Every show that we uh, put on in several venues throughout Central Florida has an aspect of a charitable contribution. Some civic group, some cause, uh, and you've seen the list, I think, of some of the things that we've done. Oh, yeah, and we'll, and we'll get into that here. Yeah. We've raised well over a quarter of a million dollars and counting. I think it's actually considerably more than that, but I don't keep track of that. So right. uh, I just my job is to organize uh, some of these charities. Uh, and, and for me, it's especially exciting because I get to work with a lot of Mount Dora civic groups and charities and the causes that happen there. Uh, so I get to see the direct benefit as it goes back into the community, and you know, that's near and dear to me. Right. Now, what got you involved in Get Off the Bus originally? Well, that's an interesting story. Uh, as you know, I've been doing some concerts and promotions in Mount Dora for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, about four years ago, I come to meet Joe Bamford. Uh, Joe was attempting to do a show in the building. And so everybody in Mount Dora said, Joe, uh, you need to talk to Brian Young. So that kept coming up in his sphere of influence. And so lo and behold, he finally decided to reach out and meet me. And it turns out we had a ton of things in common, love of music, uh, love of promotion. And we immediately formed a partnership to start doing these shows, uh, specifically at that time in Mount Dora, but now, of course, it's expanded into uh, the villages, into the Apopka Amphitheater, and a wow. number of other uh, venues throughout uh, Central Florida, and, and sometimes even further away. Those aren't my favorite. I don't like to get too far from home. <laughs> sure, sure. But Joe, if you recall from the uh, last time he was here, he was explaining that uh, he and Fatima, his wonderful wife and mm -hmm. uh, accounting bookkeeper, she keeps us honest. Right, right. Uh, they owned a bus company for years, so uh, they were busing around the biggest names in the business all over the United States and Canada. So Joe developed personal relationships with the artists and the tour managers, and lo and behold, uh, it just occurred to him one day, you know what, I have a unique opportunity here. So he offered one of the bands uh, a reduced rate on a bus in exchange for doing a concert for a charitable event. Now, they agreed. They did it. It turned out wonderful for everyone. The band saved a little money. They did a concert, raised a ton of money for it. At that time, they were raising money in Canada for the hospital uh, right, up right. in Perry Sound, where Joe actually lives. So that's how it all came to be. And uh, just it absolutely exploded it, it, yes. since then. Uh, well, the concert list is, is a little larger than I would like, but Joe's ambitious. <laughs> really? Is that is that so? Yeah. He, he uh, Well, as you can see, on some of the concerts are on the same night in different venues, which is always uh, a real treat. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that's a challenge. <laughs> I, I, for me, I would love to meet more and more because the the list of artists you have changes every yeah. year. You, you add, it seems like you just add some. I don't see anybody not there that right. was there a year or so ago. What's nice is that the relationships we develop with these uh, tour managers and the agencies that represent them, they've come to know that we're a good quality organization. We're going to take care of their artists. And we kind of plug a unique hole in Florida. And I don't know if you've noticed, but other than the Amway Center, there's really not a place to do large concerts. Like, for instance, Ford Amphitheater. What used to be the Ford Amphitheater. It's now uh, the Tampa at the fairgrounds. Right, um, right. You have the St. Augustine Amphitheater. Orlando doesn't have something like that. So huh. uh, they're always calling Joe to say, hey, we have a hole in our schedule. Is there 
a way we could plug something in here. And it works out great for us because it's a better deal to get them on a routed date than it is to try to fly them in one at a time to, to do a show. Sure. So between the Apopka Amphitheater, the Villages, the Sharon, the Savannah, and Mount Dora, we've got a number of options to put the bands into. So it has really worked out well. The venues are, they, they vary yes. greatly. In uh, size and scope, all of it. Uh, right. I mean, we're, we're talking, <clears throat> some are quite large, mm-hmm. from what I gather, oh. and some are pretty tiny, intimate. Tiny, small ones, like the Mount Dora Community Building. Uh, Joe and I have made that mm-hmm. a pet project. And oh, really? For, yeah, for the past three Good. years. Again, everybody who listens <laughs> knows I'm a Mount Doran. So. And the reason that happened is because when we do a sh- when we once did a show in the Mount Dora Community Building, Winona Judd, for example, mm-hmm. uh, she came. Uh, the production, meaning the sound, the lights, and all of the stuff that comes with that, you're, you're talking as much as $12,000 and all day to load in and set up. So it's pretty pricey to add that onto wow. the ticket price. Now, granted, we sold the show out, but we barely made the sound check time because of the complexity of the setup. So uh, myself and Joe and a number of groups in Mount Dora decided it's time that we put in our own sound system. So I'm proud to say that due to our fundraising efforts and the city of Mount Dora stepped in and voted to approve uh, an amount of money to get that done. So we now have a brand new state-of-the-art DAS Aero 20 uh, sound system in that building, and it's fabulous. It debuted with Poco, if you're familiar with Poco. Uh Yeah, they just knocked it out of the park, crystal clear digital sound. It was really fascinating. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that's one of the things we do. That group uh, that we support, and in fact, a number of our concerts in Mount Dora directly benefit the patrons of the community building. It's a group of four fabulous ladies that have gotten together, and they have decorated the building. They have made the green room something really respectable. In fact, artists really? comment constantly when they come through Mount Dora that, oh, your green room is fabulous. Uh, and if you've been in the lobby, it's uh, really well decorated. Uh, and now the sound system. The next thing we're going to do is support the project to raise the funds for the new lighting system. So one thing at a time. Sure, uh, sure. We're going to get that done. Well, when you're talking about bands, musicians, audio has got to come first. Uh, right. Absolutely. I mean that. Absolutely. So I, I think that was a, a good step in the right direction. Or the right step, I should say. So that's just, and that's just the. And, I've, and I have been in the, the community building. And like I said, it's not small, but it's not massive. Very intimate almost. Extremely intimate. Great history. It was built in 1927. It was inducted by Calvin Coolidge and his wife, who 27th president of the United States. Uh, Gosh, I didn't they know literally did the ceremony to uh, induct the building. So fabulous history. Uh, 618 seats, 60 feet from the stage in the back row. There's really not a bad seat in the house. Wow. Now, you also play in the Villages now, Mm -hmm. correct? At the Sharon and at the Savannah Center. Both of the venues are in play pretty regularly. Of course, the Sharon is the really high-end shows, like Willie Nelson. Right, right. Uh, We had Olivia Newton-John. I tried to get Joe to get her on my show. Bad, bad. Just It couldn't happen. A little difficult. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But that's the level of show we do in the Sharon, and uh, the people there are very supportive. Uh, so we've had great success with that. And many of the charities we support up there are obviously uh, domiciled in the villages, uh, the different um, rotary groups or ones like that. We, we do focus a lot on pet-related or animal-related causes. That's, really? that's That's near and dear to our hearts. and. Uh, most of our friends are part of that. Uh, the one group we really like and have supported on several shows is the the Canine Autism Group that trains the dogs to interact with the autistic children. Uh, they're out of Claremont, and I apologize really? that I can't remember the name of the group. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, that's all right. Uh, it's, it's probably on the right. list here, but yep. that's the kind of thing that we do, uh, and we raise. Uh, you know, on any given concert, it, we might raise from two to. Thirteen thousand dollars. It just depends on uh, the support from the audience, uh, and typically, what we do is we'll get a signed guitar or two, and a photo opportunity with with the artist, 
uh, and people bid on that uh, guitar. And we've sold those guitars a thousand, twenty five hundred dollars. People step up and, really? and support the cause. It's really fantastic. Do, does the artist select the the cause, or is there? Yes, I want it to go to this, and but you know this time, you know you guys bring up a good one say this is something that just come up recently can we shift the charity sure it that there are a number of ways that works if it's a really uh high level touring artist like case in point charlie daniels band oh, yes. um, we were hard pressed to find a charity that would fit that the way we wanted it to so we actually reached out to charlie daniels and said you have a cause you support, right? And he said, of course. And it ended up being a veteran's cause. And lo and behold, there happened to be... Sounds like them. Yeah, happened to be a chapter of that in Central Florida. So uh, we got together with them. They came out, and that's the other part of it. The charity group gets involved in volunteering to help at the event, which is really fabulous because it takes a lot of people to put on that level of production. Yeah, a lot of that. Uh, it, it, it works out well for everyone. To me, it sounds like a win-win. People are entertained, and they get they know that their money is not just going for the entertainment itself, Absolutely. but to something else. If someone wanted to get more information, where could they get that information? Well, we maintain a website that has a ton of detail on it, getoffthebusconcerts.com. And, and that, that has page, a list? Yes, dedicated to explaining how that charity works and there, you can even if you're a charity in this area and you'd like to get involved in fundraising send us a query all right well we need to take a quick break but when we return we'll continue our conversation we'll be right back Hi, and welcome back to Radio Waves. Again, I'm your host, Chris Poliquin, and this is a production of Red Apples Media. Today, we're talking with Brian Young from Get Off the Bus, and he's explaining to us the how the organization works with the artist for the specific charities. Brian, what do we have coming up? I mean, because I'm looking at this list, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to sound like a cheesy promoter on the show, but I'm actually kind of stoked. These, yeah, yeah. We've got some serious names coming to Central Florida. We sure do. Uh, and and we don't just limit it to a particular genre, as you can see. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it's some of the top uh, country artists on the planet, Willie Nelson, of course, being one of those. We've done several shows with Willie. Mm -hmm. Of course, I do have to say the difficult part about doing a show with Willie is you don't know if he's going to end up sick or not. So twice... You've had to reschedule shows, which right. is a very complex deal, but I'm sure. we always get it done. Um, if you're a classic rock fan, uh, you'll notice some big names on here uh, from the 80s that you will not want to miss. Kansas, yeah, December 9th in the Sharon. Uh, there might be a handful of tickets left for that, so if you haven't gotten it already, you might be missing out. Um, wow. Badfinger, remember those guys? Oh, yeah. yeah they're coming to the Savannah Center. Uh, tickets go on sale November 9th for that. That'll be happening in the new year, that show. Uh, my personal favorite, and I've been trying to put this show together for three years, yep. and it's happening in Mount Dora, folks. Blue Oyster Cult. I, I can't wait. Uh, I, we, that, we spoke about that off air, and that's going to be... <laughs> I, I'm excited. One of my fondest memories is installing my 8-track tape player in my Volkswagen Beetle in early 1982, <laughs> And I got a gift from someone. I opened it up, and it was, of course, Fire of Unknown Origin. Is which that was right? The very popular Blue Oyster Cult album that had Burn yep. For You and uh, great songs on that. So very excited about that one. That's awesome. And see, what's fascinating is you get to meet all these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, that... And every, I think everybody has met someone at some point, some kind of celebrity or... but. You've got you've got it, quite the job. It's it's cool because in in many cases you, we develop uh, friendships and relationships with these people. And uh, classic case of that is the Little River Band. We do a number of shows with them, and uh, I now have a relationship with three of the people in the band doing other projects not related to this. So wow. uh, it, it's fascinating how that all works out. They're just really genuine down to earth people in the end. And that's and and I think that's probably the the, the mystery, mm -hmm. you know. 
well, I wonder if that guy is really like that. Or is he nice, or or what have you? And you get to you get to see that right up front, which is kind of and again working for a what I deem a worthy cause, you know, because they're doing their thing anyway. Absolutely. Going through the list, like uh, uh, tomorrow we've got Pavlo. Yes. And I should speak on this guy. He was a guest on my show, and he is absolutely fantastic. If you, if you get a chance to go see this guy, he's fantastic. He uh, is fantastic. Internationally, his credentials are off the chart but in the united states it's a very difficult market to crack but sure he's uh doing really well in the mount dora community building i expect we may sell every single seat oh i, yeah, I bought mine already yeah i'll is, tell you that now we've got some serious named guys you've already brought up the blue oyster cult you're you know willie nelson winona olivia newton john mm -hmm. and it, the list really just keeps going <laughs> on and on and on. And I'm looking at some of the charities that these guys do, and there are quite a bit of you know pet oriented, um, but there's the PTSD one, mm -hmm. like you were speaking of Charlie Daniels mm -hmm. earlier. They these guys are really they're doing it, you know they're really doing it. Um, what do you see? Get off the bus, becoming morphing into, or what do you? Do you guys have a plan for growth? And if so, what is that? Well, Joe's, and how can people help? Joe's vision is to uh, to be because uh, we're competing against, of course, Live Nation, AEG, these large promotion companies that you couldn't have a prayer to go up against and do right. anything successful. Uh, but we have discovered we occupy a unique space in Central Florida with the lack of venues, so. We're lucky because the tour managers call us or the agencies, and it's not upsetting Live Nation or AEG too much because they're not so they're interested not focused in this at area. this point. So it's, it, we see ourselves uh, becoming the largest. We kind of already are in this area, of course. Uh, we want to cement that. We want to get more community uh, involvement into what we're doing. Uh, we want to see every show sold out. We still actually have some shows that we have seats left over for, which is always amazing to me. Well, again, people got to know. They got to know. And and I found that Central Florida is kind of unique in that. It's a lot of word of mouth. Hey, did you know so-and-so is coming? So, you know, to, to be able to increase that type of exposure is, sure. I'm sure, challenging. And, and Joe and I have always had this goal in the back of our heads of, uh, we like the Austin City Limits model. And okay. I remember that show. We're actually at the Pablo show going to introduce a new concept. We're going to film this concert and prepare it for public access television. And we already have a commitment from Orange TV with one and a half million households to run that programming, which for Mount Dora is pretty enormous to be able to get the community uh, building sure. to that audience. Sure. And uh, the villages. Absolutely. Because again, your, your venues, you've got quite a few. Mm -hmm. And this is not just a, a Florida organization. Correct. Uh, uh, Canada. Uh, exactly. Now we're focusing on Florida, right. of course. Um, although I'm sure if you want to catch a concert in Canada... I'm sure the tickets, the, the the airports are open now. So, but this is a, a large organization that you guys, and it's basically just you and Joe. Me right? and Joe and his his wife Fatima, Fatima, and, yeah. and his daughter Jen. She handles most of the uh, advertising, marketing campaigns, and she's liaison the liaison with the tour managers and and so on. Uh, so really, it's four. We have one person, uh, Virginia McKinney bless her heart, she gets to deal with the bands and the tour managers backstage the whole time. Oh, so, what a drag. Yeah, she, <laughs> she feeds that must them. Be, that must be <laughs> awful. Uh, she's the one with the best stories. Oh, I'm uh, sure. I, I can tell you right now. I am so. <laughs> sure. Stories. Well, you got to have some stories well, yourself. I, I have a few, some I can't. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, well, I'm not asking you to slander anybody, yeah. but for, by no means. Uh, by no means. But at, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll... I'll Flat out make a request of you. If you ever get the inclination to walk Charlie Daniels or someone uh, around downtown, yeah, give me a call first. Uh, you know that's Charlie. Because I'm sure that's kind of scary for him. Well, I, mean, I don't know how often they do that. He, he, the first time we brought him to Mount Dora, uh, 
he and his wife started walking around town and they fell in love with Mount Dora. In fact, two years later when we brought him to Apopka, he asked about Mount Dora. Really? And he didn't realize he was so close to it. <laughs> so, right. And, and then another artist that we have a good relationship with now that loves Mount Dora is Rick Derringer. Does that name ring a bell? It does. <laughs> really? Yeah. We brought him in and he did a great show. Uh, he now comes back from time to time to uh, bring his wife to Mount Dora. They loved it so much. Well, it's, it's a hard town not to... <laughs> it really is. Sure is. You know, and you know my feelings on Mount Dora. Uh, and I expect the villages get, because that, that's a large population group. Absolutely. I mean, a massive amount of people living in basically their own county. Going back to the actual charities, some of these are global. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference? Do you try to stay, stick with local charity so that, say, the, the denizens of Lake County mm -hmm. are going to these specific concerts and it they're getting a return? Yeah, it is our preference to, to do something that the dollars actually flow right back into the community in that sense. Okay. But the reason you'll see a national level is because of a personal contact with someone in the local community who serves that charity or is involved in it on the board of directors. Uh, or in the case of Charlie Daniels, a special request to do it. Right, um, right. So that's that's why you'll see that uh, happening from time to time. If someone wanted to try to get on your list of charities, sure. are you open to that? Absolutely. We, it's like, hey, we, I think we have a, a good thing here. Do you think you might be able to convince an artist? Sure. And, and a lot of times the artist it doesn't even get involved. They're just happy that we're doing something that, that gives back. Okay. Uh, so if, if there is a civic group or a specific charity interested, if they go to getoffthebusconcerts.com, they can send us an email, introduce themselves, and we'll start a dialogue. Okay. So it's you're not just locked down with any no, specific No, no, no. Like uh, absolutely not. Uh, okay. We're always looking for good causes, trust me. Again, if someone wanted to get information and like a list of the, the events, where can they go? to getoffthebusconcerts.com. That will have every concert that we're doing in every venue, including Canada. You can find out in one fell swoop what's happening. If you want to stay a little more local, like about what's going on in Mount Dora, you can always go to Mount Dora Live. Oh, right, yeah, okay. MountDoraLive.com, and that will show you the concerts uh, in that series. Okay. Uh, and, and does the village area have something like that? I mean, they almost would have to, but... You, you can go to villagesentertainment.com, but that is a massive calendar. Oh, I bet. Again, it's, it's that the villages, they have... Well, you utilize two of Two venues, venues right? Correct. And there's three town centers we know for... Oh, well, I know. So... It's and quite a bit. It's we are not the bit. only promoter in the villages, and they do their own productions. So it's a really tight, packed schedule. So my recommendation there is if you want to know which are Get Off the Bus concert productions, because they do not delineate on their sites. Oh, it's just this concert, Correct. this concert, this concert. You have to go to getoffthebusconcerts.com to see which of the shows in those venues are being produced by us. Okay. Well, Brian, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank you very much for sharing this information. And I hope I can get you back on here for... A number of other topics. Well, the the train. I'm involved in that, so I'll be happy to come back and talk about that. We may just do that. All right, that's all we time we have for today. I'm your host, Chris Poliquin, and this has been Radio Waves. We'll see you next time.